how do you now approach Ramadan so that you can get the most out of it? Like what, how do you go into Ramadan? Um, I think for me, one thing that has become really important in recent years is anything that is not um, directly related to something that's going to increase my iman or increase, like improve my relationship with Allah to get me closer to Allah, anything that's not directly related to that to keep it as simple as I possibly can. So, you know, things like, for example, preparing the iftar. I mean, I know that if we make the intention as we're preparing it, we're doing this for the sake of Allah, we're nourishing our families. Obviously, we're going to get hasana from that. But um, for me, like things like that, just making them as simple as I possibly can. So, um, you know, for example, for sahur, having leftovers, you know, from the night before or just making very simple meals, like maybe just some, you know, break our fast with dates and yogurt, and then maybe have some soup, and then we go pray, and then we come back and just have a very simple meal. Um, so things like that, like the things that I'm able to simplify, you know, working to make that as, sim as simple as I can, so that I can use that time, you know, to focus on things which for me are, you know, are going to bring me closer to Allah are going to increase my iman yeah yeah I I get that completely I think uh the the things that we do day to day that are actually a form of ibadah I think Ramadan is the perfect time to remind ourselves that they are forms of worship and that cooking or having patience you know or smiling letting somebody go in front of you whatever it is just day to day the things that we do that are forms of worship and I think it's just about for me um which I think is a part of what you're saying as well is just actually what are those parts in the day that are forms of ibadah that we can focus on and to set intention behind them as well um that we're doing this purely for the sake of Allah you know yeah, that's the important thing is remembering to make that intention. Yeah, because I don't think it has to be. So I've been really hard on myself in the past about oh, I have to do all these big significant things for my Ramadan to be accepted. No, I don't. Allah knows, you know, we're all tested in different ways. And it might be for me that I just spend more time, valuable time with my children or just to have a little bit more patience or being more present, you know? Um, it's the small acts that actually are easier to do, and then we're more likely to continue doing them after Ramadan as well, inshallah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's really important. And again, you know, Erin, I think it's a phase of your life as well. You know, when you've got younger children, for instance, like yourself, I think what you're saying is key. There's no point trying and sitting and reading the Musaf when your children are hungry or whatever it is, they really need you, right? So for me, for instance, I'm reminding myself, like, you know, at this point of time, I have my mom with me. And as you know, she has got quite advanced dementia now and she forgets lots of things. So much as I would like to go to the masjid, I love going for Tarawi. I went last year, uh, but last year she was better. She didn't, uh, you know, she she understood that I was going. Will I be able to go this year? I don't know. And then, you know, comes to something that, again, somebody said to me, and it's sort of always stayed with me. You know, so it, life is not black and white, and you're not given a choice between good and evil. And wisdom is choosing the better of the good things that you presented with and choosing the lesser of the two evils. Mm -hmm. Oh, I often times feel that, you know, that because sometimes even in Ramadan, some things will come up and, um, you know, you think that, oh, I must should not actually be doing this in Ramadan. And then you think that, OK, if I didn't do this would happen. And if I did do this would happen. And you try to choose the lesser of the because you, you're not always presented with good. And even if the good, for instance, going to Tarawi is excellent. 
you know, you get the khushu, you get to pray behind the imam, you get to finish the Quran in 10 days and all of that. But if my mom is going to get really puzzled and walk around, should I be doing that? So yeah, it's just, I think, mm. and for each their own, for each their own, I don't think there is, that's why it's a very personal journey. There is a framework, mm. there is a framework that you have to follow. But the rest of it, I think it's very personal. Mm. And nice. also, Alan knows that you want to go to Kedawiya and that, you, yeah. that your heart is there. Mm. And that it is um, an opportunity for you to be there with your mom. Because actually, he knows that ordinarily you would go because that is what you want to do. So actually, by by saying, I'm going to stay here with my mom Mm. because she needs me Mm. more than, you know, the mosque right now. But that's that's an incredible... Yeah. I... Yeah, I think that's why, you know, it's important to make the intentions. And that's why it says, um, the hadith that says, so your intentions are important uh, for a reason. Because even if you do not get to do, say, going to Tarawih, inshallah, you'll be rewarded as if you had, because your intention was there. And if you had done it, obviously the, the reward would be greater. And I think this is, and that's quite powerful to know that Allah is that merciful and will reward us for something we're doing just because the thought of or making the intention that we intended to do or we hope to do this. I, I think that's encouraging in itself to just always be clear about intention. That's why I always think me, I was like, what's my why, my intention, be very clear about it. Because even if I didn't get to fulfill it, fulfill it, inshallah, who knows? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I'll present it on the day of judgment and all the intentions I made and I had not completed a majority of them with, you know, yeah. I, I might be rewarded the full reward. Who knows? I don't know. You don't know. No one knows. Yeah. And I don't know and if you had put up a post, Nadine. I, I don't know if it was you or somebody else. I, it was really beautiful. It was like a pyramid. And you know, like how when you intend things, so one is for, you know, you're just fulfilling the basic things. That is for spiritual mm-hmm. fulfillment. And the very top is the pleasure of Allah. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's the thing I sent in the yes. WhatsApp group about that. I'm on the, oh, that about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I remember seeing this and I remember. So again, going to Tarawi is feeding my soul because I love standing there behind the Imam and listening to the beautiful recitation of the Quran. But then if I want truly the pleasure of Allah, and, and of course, I don't know if my mom will be okay or not. She may be okay as well. I don't know yet, you know, because one of the children might stay back. I, I don't know what's going to happen. But if she was, you know, obviously the pleasure of, if she really needed me, the pleasure, that would be the pleasure of Allah, isn't it? I'm doing it for the pleasure of Allah. So, subhanAllah. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's a lot of introspection. Yeah, yeah inshallah. Yeah. Well, it definitely didn't take me, um, like, I it, like thinking back, which Ramadan, like any of my Ramadans, and I think I could say any of them were like, great <laughs> or great. You know, if I look back, I can't really pinpoint one or really remember one that stands out. Um, so it really took me many Ramadans uh, before I figured it out. You know, I had to actively do the work beforehand and through the year. And as I was mentioning before, like that's my resolution month. I decided that I'm cutting out January. January is not my resolution month. Ramadan is my resolution month because Ramadan is the month of multidimensional training and transformation and emancipation of the soul. And the true test is continuing and extending the good we engaged in beyond Ramadan. So once I understood that and I made sure that it reverberated in my entire being, like mind, body, and soul, like I actually felt that, then, you know, I worked um, or found ways to make Ramadan the best one. So it was really about planning, managing, and the intention beforehand. 